The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. Dramatised for radio by Barbara Clegg. With Stephen Garlick as David. think that once I only saw the city in my dreams. Even when I was quite small, it seemed real to me. Real enough to try to describe it to my sister. There are boats there too, Mary. Boats? Yes, in the harbour. You've never even seen a boat, so how do you know that's what they are? You've never even seen the sea, if it comes to that. I have. When? In my dream. It's blue and it's big. I've seen it properly, I mean. Awake. I don't suppose the real sea is like that at all. It's bigger than... Well, it's... It's not like anything I've ever seen. Well, you can't dream about something you've never seen. Oh, you're making it up. The buildings aren't a bit like ours either. And the traffic in the streets is strange. What do you mean? There are carts running with no horses to pull them. And sometimes there are things in the sky. Birds, you mean? No. Shiny, fish-shaped things. And when I dream it's night time there, there are lights, like glowworms, but very bright, all along the shore and drifting in the air. I, I don't think I want to hear any more. Oh, but it's beautiful, Mary. Where do you think it is? Nowhere. There's no such place, not any more. You must be dreaming about the world the way it used to be, in the time of the old people, before God sent tribulation. It must have been a wonderful world. Yes. David? Hmm? I wouldn't mention it to anyone else if I were you. What? This dream you keep having. Why not? Well, I don't think other people have pictures in their heads like that. They might think it was odd. Like me being left-handed, you mean? No. Being left-handed doesn't really matter. That's all right. Everything was all right, of course. Or so it seemed to me at ten years old. I was a happy, carefree boy and took my world for granted. The high bank was just a part of it, coming round in a wide curve and running straight as an arrow to the distant hills. I never thought of it as man-made then. It seemed too vast to be a work, even of the wondrous old people. But the day I crossed that barrier, I also crossed another. It was that day, exploring the other side, the doubt first entered my world. That day, I met Sophie. <laughs> Who's there? Hello. Who are you? I've been watching you sliding down the bank. I've never seen you before. I thought I knew everyone round here. It does look fun. Would you like to have a go? Yes! Yes, I would! <laughs> Of course she would. She was Sophie. Not like any girl I'd met before. Gaiman and lots of boys I knew. And she could stick at things too. <laughs> I've nearly had enough. I haven't! Wait! Oh. Oh, hurry up. Hey, I'm waiting for my turn. Move over. I can't. It hurts. What's the matter? My foot's stuck. Let's see. It's jammed between two stones. Oh, it's no good. I, I can't budge them. Try and sort of twist your foot out. <laughs> well, come. Wait a minute, I've got a knife. What's that for? To cut the shoelace. I can't get at the knot. I mustn't take my shoe off. Why not? <laughs> Look, if you don't take your shoe off, you'll be stuck here forever. You'll probably die here. All right. 
But you mustn't look. Oh, I can't help but look, can I? Ooh, it's a bit puffy. It's swelling like anything. And... Oh! Poor Sophie. She couldn't walk, she couldn't even put her shoe on, and all she wanted was to get home. It's all right, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie! I'm sorry, Mummy! Oh, your knees! I carried her as far as I could. I had to crawl! They're all bleeding and... <laughs> and your foot, Sophie. Come inside. Warmth. The Wender's home was filled with it, different from mine in every way, much smaller. No texts hanging on the walls and no disapproval. There. Now, pat it dry and kiss it better. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and now, the bandage, please, David. Here you are. And when we've made it more comfortable, we're all going to have something to eat. And then you, my poppet, are going to hop up to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to. <laughs> Come on, and that was how it was all through the meal. We never laughed at meal times at home. It was like a revelation to me that people could be so relaxed together. But after Mrs. Wender had carried Sophie up to bed, she came down and sat beside me, and she was much more serious then. You're a good boy, David. Thank you for being so kind to Sophie. She was very brave. It must have hurt like anything. You saw her foot? Yes. Did it seem odd to you? You mean because it's got an extra toe? Yes. <laughs> you are the only person who knows, except for her father and me. Nobody else must. Ever. That's very, very important. Why? Because if anyone were to find out, they'd... They'd be terribly unkind to her. Sophie? Yes. Because she's got six toes? Yes. So, we've got to keep it a secret. You promise, David? I promise. I was halfway home before any connection dawned on me. The connection, that is, between Sophie's toe and the precepts which were dinned into us every Sunday, including the definition of man. And each leg shall be jointed twice, and have one foot, and each foot five toes, and each toe shall end with a flat nail. And any creature that shall seem to be human, but is not formed thus, is not human. It is a blasphemy against the image of God, and hateful in the sight of God. Hateful in the sight of God! God can't hate Sophie. Not because of one little toe. Oh, I expect I've got it wrong. I used to go over to Sophie's home once or twice a week after that. I met her father, John Wender. So, you're David. Yes. Joseph Storm's boy. Your father's a man of consequence, lad. Wacknook Farm, a magistrate, a preacher. Yes. And more than that... He's a very pious man, isn't he? With a keen eye for a deviation. So you all know what an offence is, eh, lad? An offence? I used to think it quite exciting when an offence was found amongst the farm stock. <laughs> First it would throw my father into a furious temper. Then, in the evening, he would call us all together to pray. The penance of tribulation was put upon the world for sin as the expulsion from Eden, as the flood, as the pestilences, as the destruction of the cities of the plain, as the captivity, so was tribulation. And the duty and purpose of man in this world is to fight against those evils which tribulation loosed upon us. Next morning, we'd all be up before daylight and gather in the yard. Rejoice, rejoice. True purity of form shall come once more, and blessed is the norm. 
As the sun rose, it would shine on my father's knife. <gasps> and my father would ceremoniously slaughter the two-headed calf, or four-legged chicken, or whatever the offence happened to be. And then there were my half-uncle Angus Morton's great horses. Twenty-six hands at the shoulder. They are wrong, I tell you, Inspector. Government approved. Any government that could pass creatures like that is corrupt and immoral. It's still the government, Joseph Strom, and it says the breed is produced simply by mating for size in the normal way. It says, it says. God never made horses the size of those two. They ought to be destroyed. They're offences. They're not right. Yes, I know what an offence is, Mr Wender. It's... it's something that doesn't look right. Right, David? Well, not like his parents. And blasphemies? What do you know about blasphemies, lad? Not very much, except that's what we call it when it happens with people. Only they're not people, really. They're... they're deviations. They live in the fringes, and they're... they're, um... What were they, exactly? Be good now, or I'll fetch old Maggie from the fringes to you. She's got four eyes to watch you with. And four ears to hear you with, and four arms to smack you with. So you be careful. Well, say airy Jack on you, you little imp. And he'll take you off to his cave in the fringes where his family lives. They're all airy, like he is, with long tails. And they eat little boys for breakfast. Blasphemies. They're just sort of bogeys grown-ups try to frighten you with. You don't have to bother about them, really. No, lad. Don't you bother your head. And I didn't, much. Till the evening I got a splinter in my hand. It was quite a bad splinter. Do get from under my feet, David. What are you doing in the rag drawer, anyway? I'm finding a bandage. I can't manage to tie it round, though. Oh, stand still, then, and let me do it. Why you have to go bleeding all over the place just as I'm getting supper, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I could have managed it all right on my own if I'd only had another hand. <gasps> Dave! What was that you said, boy? I, I said I couldn't manage to tie it myself, the bandage. And you wished you had a third hand? No, Father. I only said if I had another hand... You would I... be able to tie it. If that was not a wish, what was it? My own son... And you were calling upon the devil to give you another hand. But I wasn't. I only said... Quiet, boy! Everyone in this room heard you. You're making no better by lying. You blasphemed, boy. And before your parents. What is a mutant? A thing accursed in the sight of God and man. And that is what you wish to be. Down on your knees. Kneel and pray. Every one of us, down. Lord... We have sinned in omission. Lord, we have sinned in omission. We beg thy forgiveness. We beg thy forgiveness. That we have not better instructed this child in thy laws. Later that evening, my father instructed me in his own particular way. Pray for forgiveness. A forgiveness which you do not deserve. A forgiveness which God may grant you in his infinite mercy. Though you blasphemed in your heart, and in the wish of your heart. Ow! I remember lying awake in the dark, puzzling. If it was a terrible thing just to think of having three hands, what would happen if one really had them, or anything else wrong? Like an extra toe. And when at last I fell asleep, I dreamt. At the last purification, it had been a little hairless calf that stood waiting, blinking stupidly at the knife in my father's hand. This time, it was... Sophie!
I tried to forget the whole incident. I didn't even tell Rosalind about it, and I told Rosalind most things, even then. We had a special understanding. There didn't seem anything strange about it to us. Honestly, Rosalind, you could slip off without anybody bothering about you. I mean, asking where you're going and all that sort of thing. They're always after me for some job Hello, or other. Hello, baby boy. Uncle Axel. All on your own. Is it fairies or gnomes you're chatting to? Or only rabbits? Oh, oh legs a bit stiff today. Wouldn't it be more fun to do your chattering with one of the other kids now? I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who? Rosalind. Rosalind Morton. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't see her around. Well, she isn't here. She's at home. And I suppose she's talking to you. Well, she was, till you arrived. I'm sorry I broke it up. That's all right. We can talk any time. No, shut up, Rosalind. Not now. I'm busy. Well, she's not going to like that, is she? She does it to me quite often, especially when she's out riding or helping her mother. You must uh, think about her a lot. Not really. It might be better, you know, David boy, if you were really to get to know her. Instead of just make-believe. It isn't make-believe. Oh, I know your two families don't always see eye to eye. But, but I know her better than anyone, Uncle Axel. We think together. You what? Well, we talk. Only sort of in our heads. Uh, well, when she isn't here. When you can't even see each other. Yes. How far can you uh, talk like this? I don't really know. We can do it when I'm in Wacknock and she's at Kentuck. That far? Yes. Oh, Davy boy, this isn't play stuff, is it? It's the real truth you're telling me. Yes, Uncle Axel, of course. <sighs> How does it work? You, uh, you hear inside your head, do you? No, not hear exactly. Uh, and it's not exactly seeing either. We sort of think what the other one's thinking and and feel what the other one's feeling. It's like sort of sharing. Mind sharing? Yes. Yes, that's it. Mind sharing. It's all sort of shapes, picture shapes uh, and sound shapes. Oh, it's awfully difficult to explain. You don't have to use words, though. You don't have to say it out loud uh, the way you were doing it just now. No, but sometimes it helps to make the shapes easier to understand. That's all, if you put them into words. Hmm. It also helps to make things a lot more dangerous for both of you. Dangerous? Yes. Dangerous. The dangers of being different. Different from other people. Uncle Axel said we must be careful. So I warned the others that evening. There were six of us then. Rosalind. Yes, David. Michael. What is it? Anne and Rachel. Yes. yes. Catherine. Here I am. I told them what Uncle Axel had said. It's dangerous. We've got to make sure that no one else finds out about us. We've got to be careful. Promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. We've got to stick together. We're a group. We're the same. We're together. We belong. We're sharing. We promise. We promise. We promise. 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 And that was the first faint stirring, really. Not just of being united, but of knowing we were different from other people. We hardly had time to think about our pact, though. Something else put it completely out of our heads. The fringes invaded. <laughs> Wacknook was a rallying point. Volunteers gathered there. Squads were formed, and our farmhands were conscripted. There was great bustling and coming and going. There was only seven miles between us and the invaders. Come on, man! All's well! They're on the run! Uh, was there much fighting? Is everyone all right? A good few of us wounded, six killed. Thirty or forty of their lot dead. That's put pay to the fringes. And we've taken one of their leaders prisoner. It was later that day that they brought him in, tied onto a horse, a whole company of them filling our yard at Wacknock. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. 
He doesn't look very funny. Well, perhaps it's his face. Wait till he turns round. <gasps> Mary! He looks just like Father. Yes. They're exactly alike. All right, get those two down. You and you, you're in charge of them. Rest of you, see the horses, then you can roll out the barrel. We've bred enough for you all. Right, jump to it. <gasps> Mary! Mary, look at him now. He's got off the horse. Oh, he's like a spider. How long do you think his legs are? And his arms. At least twice as long as normal ones. Look, his eyes are going everywhere. He's beckoning to someone. You. Me? Yes? What do you want? What's your name, boy? David. David Strom. Joseph Strom, his son. So this is what... Yes. How do you know? What's going on here? Clear off, lad. But... Op it! Go on. Who's in charge of this prisoner? They all rode away soon after, and we heard later that the fringes man had managed to escape. I wanted to ask my father about him, but I never dared. I went back to playing with Sophie, and life relaxed again. Blow! That one's got away again. They're sort of shrimps. I'm coming in as well. And I'm taking my shoes off. I don't care. Lots and lots of them. We're going to catch hundreds. Isn't the water clear? Mm. You can see our feet. They're not really horrible, are they? Mm? What? My toes. Oh, they're not horrible at all. They make mine look all knobbly. <laughs> I've got one! Where did you put the jar? I left it with the shoes. It's just like a floor, this rock. It's lovely and flat and smooth. Let's see who can get the most. All right. Three to you. Um, hello. To... Oh, hello, Alan. What are you doing? Getting the shoes. Sophie, catch. Who's she? A friend of mine. What's she going off into the bushes for? Why doesn't she come over? What's the matter? Is this footprint hers on the rock here? I'm going to bring her back. No, you're not. Oh. Oh. It was only a temporary solution, though. I soon realised that while I was explaining what had happened to Sophie's father. Her feet were wet, you see, Mr Winder, and the rock was quite smooth and dry, so the print was as clear as anything. David. You could see... You could see... Yes. I'm afraid it's come, my dear. Oh, Johnny. We always knew it had to come sometime. How long will it take you to be ready? Not long, Johnny. I've been prepared for this always. They were going away, for good. I could hardly believe it. All the time we were loading the pack horses, I thought of it. I would never see Sophie again. And then they were on their way. John Wender led the horses with his gun slung across his back. At the edge of the woods, they paused and turned to wave. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, David. Goodbye. I waved back. The last I saw of them was Sophie's arm waving as the dusk beneath the trees swallowed them up. I stayed in their cottage that night to give them time, to give them a chance. I knew what would be waiting for me when I got home. Come here, boy. Where have you been? Ow. Who was this child you were seen with this blasphemy? Answer me. The inspector here wants to know. You know, David, concealment of a blasphemy is a very, very serious thing. People go to prison for it. It's everybody's duty to report any kind of offence to me. And it's very important indeed if it's a blasphemy. Yes, sir. Now, young Alan Irving says this child you were with has six toes. Is that true? No, sir. He's lying. Go to your room, boy. I'll deal with him. A taste of this will make you answer. That is my will. And answer truthfully. That is my whip. <sighs> Mary, fetch my whip from the stables. <laughs> oh, David. 
Your bottle. I told. I'll dress it for you. I told him, Mary. I couldn't help it. Lie still. I couldn't help it. What will they do to her? Oh, Sophie. I'm sorry, Sophie. What's the matter, David? What's the matter? Are you hurt? It's Sophie. Who's Sophie? A deviation? A monstrosity? No, it isn't like that. Not when it's just a little thing. It doesn't make any difference. It's wrong what they tell us. They're wrong. They're all wrong. Hmm. Rather good sweets, these. Are you sure you won't have one? Mm. That's it. Well, don't crunch it. Suck it and make it last. How long have you known that Wender child? What, what is her name, by the way? Sophie. Ah, Sophie. Yes. And how long have you known that Sophie deviates? Quite a long time. Well, that's bad, you know. It's what we call abetting a concealment. Deviations may look like us in a lot of ways, but, well, there's something different. Sophie isn't really different, though. She's my friend. My best friend. Yes. Loyalty is a great virtue. But one day you will understand the importance of the greater loyalty. The purity of the race. That is, the... They've caught them. All three of them. Oh, Sophie. Oh, Sophie. The inspector was a humane man. He slipped back a few minutes later to say that my information had had nothing to do with it. He thought that would make me feel better, I suppose. It didn't. The sort of world I lived in was slowly becoming clearer to me, but I couldn't come to terms with it. Hello there, Davy. Hello, Uncle Axel. Up and about again. How are you feeling? All right. Can I tell you something, Uncle Axel? Yes, you can trust me. I'm going to run away. I uh, wouldn't do that if I were you, Davy. It never really works. Besides, where would you run to? Whatever district you went to, they'd want to see your normal C certificate. Then they'd be able to trace you. Not in the fringes, they wouldn't. Oh, man alive, you don't want to go to the fringes. They've got nothing there, poor devils. Not even enough food. Why do you think they make the raids? Well, there must be other places, though, Uncle Axel. That's what I want to ask your advice about. How do I reach the rest of the world? Ah. Well, now, first you have to get a ship. Yes. You start by going down river from Rigo till you get to the sea. Now, it's no good sailing east, then, because the sea goes on forever. Does it? So they say. Or else it comes to an end suddenly and you sail over the edge. <laughs> Which way did you go, Uncle? South. You, you keep the coast to starboard as you leave the river. After a couple of hundred miles or so, you come to the Straits of Newf. Then after that, you bear southeast a while and then south. And then... Then you pick up the mainland coast to starboard. What's it like? M my book says it's all badlands or bad fringes country. Well, it's fringes to begin with. Plenty growing. But if you sail inshore, you can see it's all deviational. Giant heads of corn, higher than trees. Hundreds of queer things. Oh. Not many animals, though. And the ones you do see, you couldn't put a name to. Oh, it's a weird, evil land. And many a man who sees it suddenly understands what might happen here, if it weren't for the purity laws and the inspectors. It sounds bad. Yeah, that isn't the worst. The plants get scarcer. And then you come to the coast where nothing grows. Nothing at all. And it stretches inland for miles. A huge desert made all of charcoal. You don't see any birds. Nothing moves. 
except the waves breaking on the black beaches. I don't think I will run away, Uncle Axel. Hmm. Not yet, anyway. It was lucky I didn't, or I might have missed the arrival of my sister, Petra. It's a baby. Why do you think Mother's been in bed with a cold since yesterday? You mean Mother? Yes. Oh, you're even less grown up than I thought you were. And don't mention the word baby to anyone else. It's something we don't talk about, not till the inspector's been. Why not? Well, you know as well as I do, David, it's got to be officially examined and approved. The inspector's got to issue its normalcy certificate. Suppose he doesn't. Well, then it'll be sent away, of course. It won't be human, will it? So it'll be sent away. Nothing like that happened, though. The inspector called, the certificate was issued, and Petra's existence was finally admitted. Everyone on the farm stopped work, and we assembled in the kitchen for prayers of thanksgiving. It was only two days later that I overheard my mother and Aunt Harriet. baby with you. A tiny baby all the way from Kentuck. I had to. I heard your baby had come early, so... Oh, there she is. Uh, oh, she's lovely, Emily. Oh. <clears throat> Mine's lovely too, isn't she? Isn't she? She's very sweet. I am glad, my dear. Henry must be delighted. Oh, yes. Y yes, he is. She was born a week ago. I didn't know what to do. Then I heard your baby was a girl, too. It was like God answering a prayer. You've got the certificate for her, haven't you? Well, of course I have. Harriet, you don't mean to tell me that you've not got a certificate. <gasps> oh. Let me see that child properly. No. Harriet, why did you bring it here? It's nothing much. Oh, it's such a little thing. Let me leave my baby with you, Emily, and borrow yours. Just for a while. Just to get a certificate. Please. You're my sister, Emily. Please. You're the only one who can help me. <laughs> the enemies of God <laughs> besiege us. Through our weaker vessels, they attempt to defile the race. It's an immoral suggestion. It's cruel. You must be mad, Harry. Woman, you have sinned. Go home and notify your child according to the law. It's a monster, Harriet. A monster. Do your penance that you may be cleansed. That false image you've blasphemed. Harriet. Go down on your knees and pray, woman. Pray. Yes, I shall. Pray. I shall pray to God to send charity into this hideous world and sympathy for the weak and love for the unhappy and unfortunate. They found Aunt Harriet's body next day in the river. Nobody ever mentioned the baby. Accursed is the mutant, the enemy of God and man. The seed of the devil within, whose wish is to cause this place to become a place without the law. A weird, evil land. A lewd chaos where the true stock is supplanted. A huge desert made all of charcoal. Where defilements are brought forth to mock the law. Hundreds of queer things. Where unnameable creatures breed and where pollution spreads. Until abominations abound! It's nothing much. Nothing much. It's just a little thing. Oh, God, please, please, God, let me be like other people. I don't want to be different. I don't want to be an abomination. I don't want to spread pollution. Please, make me just like everyone else. When I wake up in the morning... 
Please, God. Morning, Sleepy. Oh, no. What's the matter? I'm still the same. The same as what? Why don't you want to mind share with us anymore? Don't you realize we're different? Different? All of us. Don't you know what we are? We are mutants. Mutants? What do you mean? We're not anything like What are you talking about? It's nonsense. We're mutants, I tell you. Like the things that live in the fringes. We're not... We're not right. All right, Davy. Let's have it. What's your trouble? And nobody's found out, have they? No. What is it, then? Aunt Harriet. She came to see father and mother. I heard them. I was in the room next door. She had a baby. Baby? There was something different about it. It wasn't going to get a certificate. I think... I think Aunt Harriet wanted to die. Oh, Uncle Axel. Ah, steady, Dave. What will they do when they find out I'm different? They won't. <laughs> There's nothing for them to see. Nobody's going to know about it except me. And I'm safe. Watch yourself, though. All of you. We did. We were very careful. And we were lucky. We managed to avoid direct suspicion for another six years, until the autumn I was 18. Oh, phew. It's hot work. Hey, David. Yes? Want a breather? No, it's all right. Oh, best harvest we've had for a long time. Hardest work. Come on. Have a rest. Oh. You've been at it all morning. Give me that scythe. All right, thanks. I'll go and give a hand with the stooking for a bit, then. I... Help! Help me! Help! David? What's the matter? What is it? What's wrong with him? The river! The river! Where are you going? Where's the off to? Help me! Help me! I'm slipping. By the time we got her out, she was unconscious, but still breathing. We laid her on the bank and both bent over her. I don't know whether our strongest feeling was relief or amazement. Petra, come on, come on, Petra, I had no idea she was one of us. She's not. Something like us, perhaps, but not one of us. None of us could command like that. I dropped a whole pot full of soup and just ran. I know. I was reaping. It was lucky I'd just handed over my scythe. She's something much more than we are. Much more. That night, for the first time in years, I had a once familiar dream. Only this time, when the knife gleamed high in my father's right hand, the deviation that struggled in his left was not a calf. It was not Sophie. It was Petra. can't make thought contact, though. Neither can I. I've tried. Michael, how about you? No, nothing. Rachel? No luck. We've all had a go. Anne and I as well. Yes, and Catherine. It must have been panic that brought it out. She probably didn't even know she was doing it. Suppose she does it again. Do you think I ought to warn her? Or tell her about it? No. Wouldn't be fair. She's only six. But we can't put that sort of responsibility on her. Not yet. 
We'll have to be extra careful then. They're getting more suspicious too. Almost looking round for someone to blame. That's because it's been a bad season. We've had three field burnings. So have we. And the worst deviation rate at lambing time for 20 years, according to Father. Mm, you ought to hear some of the farmhands on the subject. Ruination. That's what it is. What's the matter, Jacob? My bit of garden. Tribulated as hell. What are you going on about, Jacob? What's wrong? Beans. That's what's wrong. First my potatoes and my tomatoes and my lettuce and now my goddamn beans. The others I've had before, but who ever heard of beans being tribulated? Been a bad year, all right. It's a judgment. That's what it is. Well, I was a young man, a woman who bore a child that wasn't in the image, was whipped for it. If she bore three, she was uncertified, outlawed. Uh, made them careful about their purity and prayers, I can tell you. There's a lot less trouble with mutants on account of it. And when there were any, they were burnt. Burnt? Keep pure the stock of the Lord by fire. Do you think there are a lot of people who think that way, Uncle Axel? Like old Jacob? Hmm. Well, quite a few of the old ones, I dare say. How's that for you? Sharp enough? Oh, thanks. They still feel it's a personal responsibility. Like it used to be before they were inspectors. Middle-aged? Well, they're not quite so set on form as their fathers were. Uh, not much point wasting any time on this pruning knife. Needs more than a wetsuit. No, they don't reckon it matters much what way it's done. As long as the mutants don't breed. But give them a run of years with instability this high and... Oh, who's to say? They'll be looking for scapegoats. So watch it, Davy. Well, why should the deviation rate be higher some years than others? I don't know. All to do with the weather, I'd say. Oh. Nobody's ever worked that one out, Davy. Still, they'll forget all about it when they're dancing at the wedding next month. Wedding? Well, who's getting married? Ah, the blacksmith's boy, young Alan Irving. I feel sorry for the girl. Whoever is she? And Brent. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. Why didn't you tell us, Anne? Why should I? What would you all have said to me? You mustn't do it. Exactly. That's exactly what I knew you'd say. Because you think I might give you away to Alan, don't you? When I share my life with him, you're frightened. It's for your own sake you mustn't. It'd be like tying yourself for life to a cripple. You'll never really be able to share. Not thoughts and feelings. No. Not the way we can. The way we're part of one another. I'm a woman. I've a right to marry and have children. Yes, Anne. But one of our own kind. There must be some other people like us somewhere. If we wait... Why should I wait? Why should I waste my life waiting for someone who may never come? Besides, I love Alan. You can't. What do any of you know about being in love? Except David and Rosalind. Rosalind. I'll have to go soon. What did you tell them? Just that I was going riding. <laughs> I'm supposed to be fetching a new harness from the saddlers. Oh, mm. if only we didn't have to snatch meetings. Well, we're lucky in some ways. At least we can be together in our minds. Well, being together this way matters too. Yes. David. Hmm? Mother's... Mother's been trying some matchmaking with me. Oh, you wouldn't. Of course I wouldn't. <sighs> There's no hope, is there? I mean, it's no use us thinking... That our fathers would allow us to marry? Mm -hmm. No hope at all. Both sides would be dead set against it. <laughs> the only time they'll even meet under the same roof is in church. And it was at church the following Sunday that it happened. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it looks like the Irvings. Joseph, Caroline is ill. Oh, she's fainted. I'll go you and see what Stay where you I are, Emily. Do. There are enough women clustered around her now. Oh, yes. You! What's the disturbance? We've just brought news. It's young Alan Irving. We're going to fetch him home. Injured? Dead. Found on a field path with an arrow through his neck. It's no good. She won't see me. What did she say, Rachel? 
She must have said something. Just screamed at me to go away. She let a neighbor in, then mother. She wouldn't even let me into the house. She thinks one of us did it. No, no she would not us. us. Do any of you know anything about it? Anything at all? No, no nothing. Oh. Try to get through to her, Rachel. Get a note to her somehow, Rachel. Tell her we had nothing to do with it. Word it carefully, though, so that it won't mean anything to anyone else. In the meanwhile, we'll all keep trying. Poor Anne. And we'll keep on behaving as usual. Do you understand, everybody? We don't want to arouse any suspicions. We carry on normally. I could spell burnt porridge. Oh, nonsense. Where's Axel with those milk pails? Oh, I'll go, Mother. No, I want you, Mary. Mary! That girl never listens. You'd better stir it, David. What? That porridge. Half the farmhands are still waiting for breakfast and your father will be down in a minute. It's been one of those mornings. Any news yet about Alan Irvin? He's still dead. Mary, that's no way to talk. Where's the milk? Uncle Axel's just bringing it. Have they any idea who might have done it? Well, the arrow was one of old William Tay's, apparently. I could say that about almost every arrow in the district, as he's the best fletcher around here. Oh, there you are, Axel. Put the pails down here. Mm. Who could it have been, though? Uh, someone who had a grudge against the lad. And without speaking ill of the dead, Emily, there's probably quite a few of those in the district, too. No one who'd want to murder him, though. <laughs> what is it, Rachel? What's the matter? You are stirring that porridge, David. <laughs> Yes, Rachel. Mother. Rachel, are you all right? Besides, everybody was going to church when it happened. Steady, Rachel. Steady. We're with you. Nobody was late for church. Calm down. Nobody who could have done it. And tell us. It's, it's Anne. What? Has she said anything? I went over to her house. Just before dawn on my own, I, I knocked and knocked. But she didn't answer. The neighbour came got a log from the wood pile and pushed the window in and we climbed through and don't oh, Rachel oh, don't oh, I was upstairs in her bedroom and oh Rosalind she was hanging from one of the beams no the, there was a note on the table the neighbour gave it to me she thought it was for my parents or me she can't read though so she couldn't see who it was really for. Who was it for? The inspector. Anne was denouncing all of us. Me as well. Even Petra. She accused us all of planning Alan's murder. Oh, Anne! You've still got the note there. What? The note. You're sitting there, holding it. Burn it, Rachel, quickly, while you're still sitting in your own room. Burn it, Rachel. Yes, yes. Oh, Anne. I can't believe she's gone, that we've lost her for good. We lost her months ago. We lost her when she married Alan. When she stopped mind-sharing with us. David Strom, what do you think you're doing? You've let the porridge burn again. All forgiven. Did you say something, Jacob? Forgiven, I said. The Lord is merciful. They've got one more chance. Normality rates on the men. Yes. Ah, it's a good summer. David, have you seen Petra? No, I've been at the anvil the last hour. No one set eyes on her since the midday meal. Not that they deserve it, mind you. The evil doers. Her pony's not in its stall. Oh, if they were to get their just desserts, there'd be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Oh, do be quiet, Jacob. Uh, I don't think she'd ride off our land, would she, David? Still time for things to go wrong. She oh. knows she's not supposed to. Harvest could fail. Oh, Jacob, will you stop it? Oh, what are we David? <laughs> I must go. David, what are you doing? I'm wanted.
creature from the wild country. My horse reared, and the shot missed. But it was finished off by a couple of arrows as Rosalind and Michael rode into the clearing. It took us quite a while to get Petra down from the tree she'd taken refuge in, and all the time she kept up a piercing mind scream. Then there were more hoofbeats, and Rachel arrived. What's happening? Petra, she was riding and she was attacked. We can't pass now, Gumbelow. It's going to bring a whole lot of us together. The one thing we said must never happen. Oh, I'd better get off again then. If she's all right. Yes, yes, as fast as you can. It's all right, Petra, darling. No! <laughs> what on earth? But Catherine, everything's all right now. Get home again as quickly What's as... What's going on here? Oh, um, my sister's pony was attacked. My little sister here. We answered her calls for help. I heard no calling. I did. I'd have thought you could hear it for miles around. The pony was screaming too. Poor little brute. Look, look, here it is. Hmm. Your sister's name tag, please. Petra. And yours. And yours, girl. Here. What's all this questioning for? I'd say it's a good half hour since this pony did any screaming. How did you manage to come straight to this spot? You. This was the direction the calls had come from. And it was very good of you to try and help. There was another pony galloping off as I arrived. Somebody else heard it too. We just happened to be nearer. She isn't hurt, luckily. But she's had a nasty fright, and I'd, I'd better get her home. All of you had better get home. The fringes have got spies out. So you'll keep clear of the woods, if you know what's good for you. One thing first. What's that? Your identity tag, sir. What do you mean? Well, as you're a stranger to us. I thank you. Mm. Jerome Skinner. My father knows him. I found out at supper. He has a farm bordering on the woods where Petra was attacked. He's fairly new here. Why was he so suspicious? Does he know anything about mind-sharing? He doesn't do thought shapes himself. I've been trying him out. I didn't think any of the Norms knew about it. Some of them know about something like it. It's not really mind-sharing, though. It's very rough and inaccurate. They call it telepathy. Do they think it's deviational? I don't know. Academically, God is able to read men's minds. So the true image ought to be able to as well. But I wouldn't like to rely on that argument in front of a tribunal. This Skinner man just seemed to smell a rat to me. Has anyone else been ferreting round? No, no, no. I think so. Good. David, mm? you'd better explain to Petra. And try to teach her to use some self-control. I agree. We can't risk anything like that happening again. Don't do it where anyone can overhear you, though. I'll take her fishing. It's a sort of game, you see, Petra. You shut your eyes. They're shut. Now pretend you're looking down a deep, deep well, and there's nothing to see but dark. Right? Yes. Now watch. <gasps> a puppy! Yes. Hens and chickens. Mm. A horse and cart. That's right. Oh, well, where are they? You've opened your eyes. Did that send them somewhere else? No. They aren't anywhere. They just think things. Now, I'll shut my eyes, too. Mm. We'll both look down the well, mm. and then you think a picture so that I can see it. Oh, this is fun! <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh. let her do that again. I nearly put an axe through my foot. I've scalded my hand with the kettle. Soothe her down somehow. Yes, please. She isn't unsoothed. That seems to be just the way it is with her. Well, it's a way it can't stay. She must cut it down. This time, Petra, make a little think picture, slowly and gently, as if you were making it out of cobwebs. Mm. Stand by, everyone. Here it comes. In spite of the warning, the power was like a thunderbolt. Quite extraordinary coming from that little doll-like creature with fair curls and shining child's eyes. I had to remind myself that she was Petra, that she was only eight. Petra, could you be pleased a little less violently? What's going on with you two? It's impossible to get any work done. Like hammer blows inside our heads. Oh, stop! Please, it's awful! 
Well, now you know what we feel like when you're mind-sharing at full power. I want to practice again. All right. But if anyone comes, I'll get on with this rail and you be ready with the bellows. Right. You've learned a lot already. Mm. You can get thought shapes from each of us. You can send thought shapes. You can clear your mind without closing your eyes. That's very important. Yes, they can't tell what I'm doing. Exactly. Now, how much can you catch when the rest of us are mind-sharing together? Not very much. I can tell who's doing it. I know if it's you, or Rosalind, or Michael. But it goes so fast it gets muddled. The other ones are even more muddled. What other ones? Catherine and Rachel? No! I can tell them. I mean the other other ones. The long way away ones. I can't get anything at all. Neither can I. You're sure they're southwest? Can I have a word with you, David? That was the direction Petra pointed in. Do you think she's picking it up? No. David! Just a minute. We must all keep listening in that direction. As hard as we can. I've got to go. Just stop daydreaming and take your nose out of that soup bowl. I'm sorry to hurry you away from your supper, but I, uh, I need you to help with the wheel I'm mending. Oh, that's all right, Uncle Axel. Sorry about that, Davy, but I had to get you on your own. Someone's been careless. Joe darley has been asking questions about you. Me? You and Rosalind Morton. Oh, sounds like a bit of ordinary scandal. I don't like it. No. Petra couldn't have given the game away, could she? Petra? Well, she's only a child. She might have let something slip. I didn't tell you anything about Petra. No. How did you find out? When I was a sailor, there used to be a dive down on the waterfront in Rigo, run by a man called Grouth. He had three girls and two men working for him, and they did just whatever he said. Because if he'd told what he knew, one of the men would have been strung up for mutiny, two of the girls for murder. I used to watch the way he treated them and the expression on his face when he looked at them. Gloating. He'd got them just where he wanted them. I don't see what... I saw the same expression on someone's face in Wacknock Church. That same gloating. Someone who had a long look at Rosalind first, then Rachel, then you, and then young Petra. All through morning service, he looked at the four of you. Who was it? Alan Irvin. Alan? Anne should never have married him. She wasn't the sort who could keep secrets in bed. My God! But why didn't you tell me before? Well, it wasn't a time for talking. It was a time for doing. I came home and I thought a bit. And then I put a new string on my bow. It was you. Uncle Axel, it was you who killed Alan. It was the only thing to do, Davy. They're on to something. Definitely by the sound of things. If he does come to an inquiry, we might be able to bluff it out by acting simple. Petra's the weak spot. She's too young to understand. If they start on her and trick her and trap her, we're all for it. Yes, Petra's the key point. They must not get hold of her. It's your job to see they don't, David. If you have to kill someone to prevent it. They wouldn't think twice about killing us. And if the worst comes to the worst, and David can't save her... It would be kinder to... to kill Petra. David! I wouldn't let her go to sterilization in the fringes. We'll be thinking with you, David. Right, we decided then. And we must be ready to run for it at a moment's notice if necessary. All five of us. Hmm? What? It's Rosalind. She's been trying to get you. Rosalind? David, David, are you awake? Rosalind? Oh, thank God. We must get away at once, as soon as we can. They've taken Catherine. Hurry up, both of you, while there's time. They'll be trying to get to you too before you can be warned. Petra, get dressed as fast as you can. All right. Overalls. Right. And be very quiet. Meet you below the mill, David. And hurry. Right. Petra, good girl, don't put your shoes on and carry them. Now come tiptoe like a cat. Where are we going? Stables, to get Sheba. Hang on. Oh. Cling tight round my waist. Yes. Thank God you're away. We've all been trying to reach you for ages. There was a whole group of mounted men approaching our house as we left. Catherine? Where are you? I'm being taken to the inspectors. 
and acting sort of innocent and bewildered. Try and keep it up. I'm going to shut my mind to you. It'll be easier to act as a norm if I really don't know what's happening. So don't try and reach me, any of you. Very well. We'll be open for you, though. David, you're getting near to me. Over a bit to the right. Rosalind! You've brought the great horses. Mm. We can ride in the panniers on Garth and put the provisions in the panniers on Goliath. Hurry, David. An ordinary horse may have had the speed of the great horses, but nothing like the staying power. They could keep it up for hours, that ponderous, earth-shaking gallop. David. Yes? Where are you? Into wild country, deep in the woods. We're resting up in the daytime and moving on at night. Where are you heading? Southwest. They're sending a posse after you. I've volunteered for one, and I'll plan to report if you've been seen making southeast. If anyone sees you, stop him at all costs. Petra's asleep. The pannier rocks her off. It's pretty desolate here, isn't it? Just as well. Look at that full moon. Nearly as bright as day. It's rather peaceful. Mm. <laughs> Oh, what was that? Oh. David! Rosalind! We're here, darling. My God! What is it? It's Catherine! They're torturing her! I'm frightened, Rosalind! Block it out, darling! Try not to hear it! Try not to share! Rosalind. Yes? Can you hear me? Just. You're a bit faint. So are you. It's the distance as you travel further off. Listen. They've posted a proclamation describing the three of you and proclaiming you deviants. That means you're non-human. And not entitled to the rights or protections of human society. Yes. You're outlaws. Rosalind. Catherine's confessed. They forced it out of her. They've done terrible things to her. There are three groups after you now. Mine's the furthest away. Will we be shot on sight? They'll try to take you alive. There's a big reward out for your capture. We can't stay in wild country then. We'll have to press on into the fringes. <laughs> There aren't any bogeymen. Probably most of the people who live there are just sad and unhappy. What people look like doesn't really matter. Are you listening, Petra? Who is the other one? What other one? What do you mean? There's somebody else making think pictures. I get nothing. Nor do I. Oh, me. Hush. Questions from a long, long way away. She's in a place that's in two parts, with a lot of water. I don't understand the name. I think it's Sealand. No, it's not S. It's Z. Like the noise a bee makes. She says so. Sealand? Yes. And it has sea all round. And from where she is, you can see the sun shining on it for miles and miles. And it's all bright blue. It's nearly dark. The sun's practically set. She's crazy. It isn't evening where she is. She showed me. It's early morning. It's a place with lots and lots of houses. Bigger than Wacknuck houses. And there are funny carts without horses running along the road. And things in the air. Yes, shiny fishy things. With something whizzing around on top of them. That's right. <sighs> How did you know that, David? It's my dream. My dream city. She's nearer! She's nearer! Who? 
Rachel? No! The Sealand people, they're coming! What do you mean? She says help is on the way! And she says to play for time because I'm... I'm a discovery of the greatest importance! Oh, you are, are you? And she says it's particularly surprising to find such power among primitive people. She can't mean us. I think she does. They're closing in on you. They're closing in. Where are you? David, Fig Forest ahead on the skyline. Is that forest? It's very dark. Fig is ahead. If we can cross this heathland without being seen... Don't worry about being spotted. Get there. David! Right. This is it. On Garth. On Goliath. Oh, made it. risky to come further into the fringes in small groups. We're moving off in strength in about four hours. Oh. Rosalind? David! Oh, you've come round. Good. Oh, are you all right? Yes. Yes, I think so. Quiet! Quiet! Oh, I like that. I... I... Listen! David? I can hear something. So can I. Play for time. Play for time. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, David. Yes. Agree to whatever they say and play for time. We are coming. Who are you? Where is Sealand? The other side of the world. We are the new people. Your kind of people. Different from the old people. Don't tell me. You're the true image. I don't know about that. Who does? But we do know that we can make a better world than the old people did. They lived shut off from one another by different languages and different beliefs. Sometimes they could share emotions, but never minds. When they were primitives, they managed, as the animals do. But the more complex they made their world, the less they could deal with it. That's not what we've been told about the old people. They did marvellous things. They were clever. Mere sublime animals. Nothing more. If they had not brought tribulation down on themselves, they would have bred like animals. And starvation and barbarism would have ended them. You're very sure of yourselves, aren't you? No. But we are sure about them. They were an inadequate species. Look after the little girl. Protect her at all costs. She is unique and very important. That's me! Beware, odious smug child. We haven't met Hairy Jack yet. I think we might just be going to. Down you get, boy. Michael, we've arrived. What's happening? A lot of bowmen here. They're more interested in the horses than us. One's got seven fingers. There's one without any hair. Anywhere, as far as I can see. There's one with very big hands and feet. They're taking us down through the woods. It's a sort of beaten path. We've come to a clearing. Reddish cliffs on the right. Not more than 40 feet high. Little openings, like caves, with ladders. I think some of them live there. Huts down here. Pretty crude. And tents. One or two cooking fires. And refuse heaps. We're coming to a bigger tent. It looks like an old rick cover, fastened over poles. Pinched it in a raid, I suppose. There's a man sitting in the doorway. He's... Oh, my God! Remember me? Yes. It's the Spider-Man. Not much like Wagnook, is it? Not much. Know who I am? I think so. I found out. Oh. My father had an elder brother. 
He was thought to be normal until he was about four. Then his certificate was revoked and he was sent away. Merely right, but not quite. His mother loved him. So, when they came to take him away to sterilisation, he was already missing. Do you know what the length of a man's arm should be? No. No, do I. But somebody in Rigo does. Some expert on the true image, so. No, Wacknock. And you're the eldest son. The only son. And you've lost Wacknock, too. We heard about you. They're following your trail. Your father will be with them. Naturally. He's such a valiant champion of the true image. I've always hoped that we'd meet again one day. On equal terms. Uh -huh. And the girl. Uh, now. Yes, the girl. Oh, you got right, it! Does you credit, boy? But not much more. The women round here have a look at them as you go out. Maybe then you'll understand a bit more. Besides, this one can have children. Chuck him out. And if he doesn't stay out, shoot Shh. him. No! No! Oh. What? Where am I? Lie still till oh. I've bathed your head. Just a cut. Not deep. There. You don't know me, do you, David? Sophie. Dear David. You haven't really changed. No. A bit older, but so am I. Oh, Sophie. Where... where is this place? My cave. I found you in the wood. I brought you here when it was dark. How long ago? I still... Oh. Don't move your head. I saw them bringing you in. You and the little girl. And the other girl. Who is she, David? Rosalind! 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 Petra! Oh, thank goodness for that. We've been worried stiff about you. Rosalind, is she... They're all right, both of them. Asleep in the Spider-Man's tent, guarded. Who is she, David? My cousin, Rosalind Morton. Who's the Fringes girl with you? Her name's Sophie. We were friends when we were children. You're in love with her, aren't you? This Rosalind. We love one another. We see with a single eye. We love with a single heart. We enjoy with a single joy. We share minds. We mingle and are never alone. He wants her too, doesn't he? If she were to give him children, then he wouldn't want me anymore. Oh, Sophie, you don't love that... that Spider-Man. Oh, don't call him that, please. We can't any of us help being what we are. His name's Gordon. He's kind to me. He's fond of me. You've got to have as little as I have to know what that means. Oh, Sophie. Dear Sophie. He's gone away where the fighting is. She's safe just now, your cousin. Yes, yes, she's asleep. They're both asleep. Petra, too. How do you know? Um, we share minds. It's like talking, only better. Must be wonderful, sharing together. Like more eyes inside you. It can hurt a lot sometimes. To be any kind of deviant is to be hurt, always. Sophie... You're hungry. I'll get you some food. David, where are you? What's been happening? We've camped for the night. We've covered a lot of ground today, in spite of the sniping. Are you coming further? Yes, as soon as it's light. Rachel can only just reach me. She's right at the end of her limit. Another two or three miles and we'll be out of touch. Well, Petra doesn't seem to have any sort of limit. She'll be able to keep in touch with Rachel as soon as she wakes up. <laughs> oh, sorry, I spilt the soup. It's all right. Are you talking to them? David! You were dead. We thought they'd killed you. Oh, David. Rosalind. David. Oh, Rosalind. This is hardly decent for third parties. Could you two disentangle yourselves, do you think, while we make some sort of plan? It depends how far the Sealanders have got. Do you think you can still reach us? Yes. When? About 16 hours. And the great thing is to keep you three alive for that long. Wait a minute. Sophie? You were talking to that girl. Yes. Uh, Sophie, do you think there's any way they can be got out of the spy... out of Gordon's tent before he comes back? Yes. No. Y you stay here, David. But, but, if but... anyone saw you, they'd raise the alarm. 
The wait seemed interminable, but it was probably only a question of half an hour or so before they were back. Rosalind? Oh, Rosalind! And Petra! Hey, David! <laughs> stuck a knife into him! The man who was guarding us! It didn't make a sound! Sophie, oughtn't we try to get as far away as we can before it's light? No, they'd find you in the woods, but they'll never think of looking for you here. You mean we can stay here? I must clean my knife. Why are you doing all this for us? Why? Leave me alone, damn you! God damn your pretty face! <laughs> oh. oh, David. Are you going to sleep all day? What's the time? About eight. It's been light for three hours. We routed the fringes lot with only two or three wounded. They tried to ambush us. Are you still advancing? Yes, no opposition at all. It looks as though we're going to be taken by the norms. We can't leave this cave in daylight without being seen by the fringes people. What about the Sealanders? They'll make it in time. They've got to. We will. We should be arriving in about eight and a half hours from now. The country that we are passing over. We have seen badlands before, but not as terrible as this. If we had not known that you were on the other side of it, we would have turned back. <laughs> we will not turn back. We will reach you. That's nice to know. Petra, yes? we've got too far away for any of us to reach Rachel, except you. See how she is. She's very miserable, and she wants to know if Michael's all right. Oh, tell her he's quite all right. Tell her we love her, and we're terribly sorry she's all alone. But she must be brave and careful. She understands. She says she'll try. I think Rachel's afraid. She's crying inside. She wants Michael. Did she tell you that? No. It was a sort of behind think that I saw it. Hmm. We'd better not say anything about it. A person's behind things aren't really meant for anyone else. So we must pretend we haven't noticed. I brought you some food. Oh. No trouble. Trouble? That I'll be no guard. Not about that. They found him. They think you did it. But they've got other things to worry about. The men who went to the fighting are coming back in twos and threes. What happened, do you know? There was an ambush. It failed. And the norms are advancing. How far have they got? Michael, how far? Just clear of the forest and into rough country. They've just got to rough country. Three hours to the river bank. Perhaps a bit less. Well, there are a lot more men back now. Some of them are drifting away. Some of them are collecting round Gordon's tent. I'll see what I can find out. You, dish the food out. Oh, right. An hour went by and we heard nothing. I can't stand this waiting. They should be over the river by now. There are hardly any fringes people left in the camp. And they're mainly women. We're across the river, downstream from you. No opposition. It's all the fringes people. They're pouring back out Michael, of the woods. what's happening? Was that your lot shooting? No, the other party. We're coming in from the opposite side to take them in the rear. You're still safe. Ah. Oh. Steady, child. Steady. They're coming. Arrows from Michael's lot. They're between two fires. Poor devils. With complete panic. They're so vicious with the Spider-Man. Why doesn't he run away? Why doesn't he run away? Sophie's trying to make him. Oh, run! Run, Sophie! Why don't they run? There's your father, leading the horseman. Oh, he's down. What's happened to father? Spider-Man shot him. Oh. Oh, don't, don't look. Don't look, darling. Sophie! They got them. Both of them. There it is. Oh, like a bank of mist with flashings inside it. It's a silver fish thing. It's a silver fish. Oh, glistening. Yes. And funny glistening threads coming down from it. Like cobwebs. It's much lower now. There's Michael. There he is. 
Michael, Michael, this way. Over here. Wave, wave to him, Petra. I see you. He's coming. No, he's not. He's stopped. Oh, it's, it's like a cobweb, but sticky. I can't get my hand. It, it, it's stuck. I can't move it. Don't struggle. You'll exhaust yourself. Lie down on the ground so that it can't get round you. Keep calm. Too. It's the strands. Wrapping all round them. Get back. Get back from the entrance. One's drifted in across my arm. Oh, David. Get back. Lie down, David. Lie down, Rosalind. Petra, lie down. You're across my face now. Stifling, mummifying, unbearable, like being buried alive. But resurrection came at last. You are free. Michael, you're right. Yes. And the other two? David, that was very horrid. Petra. <laughs> ah, it was worthwhile. Yes, certainly it was worthwhile. Nobody's moving down there. It's just as though giant spiders have been spinning over everything. And it's so silent. Um, they're, they're not... They're not all dead. Yes. The threads contract as they dry. It is more merciful than your arrows and spears. Um. It is not pleasant to kill any creature... But to pretend that one can live without doing so is self-deception. There has to be meat in the dish. There have to be vegetables forbidden to flower, seeds forbidden to germinate. The essential quality of life is living. The essential quality of living is change. Change is evolution, and we are part of it. I know, but Sometime still... Sometime there will come a day when we ourselves shall have to give place to a new thing. We shall struggle against the inevitable, just as these remnants of the old people do. Treachery to one's own species must always be a crime. You are our species. The machine is waiting. We will start now. For Waknuk. I'm sorry. We have not enough fuel. The journey was much longer than we expected and much worse. Petra, do you think you could reach Rachel for me? Yes, of course. Yes, she's there. She wants to know what's happening. Right. Now, I want you to tell her this very carefully. She's to go on being brave, and in a little time, three or four days perhaps, I shall come and fetch her away. Tell her that. Oh, dear. She's gone all muddled up and crying again. She does seem to cry an awful lot, that girl. Only her behind thinks aren't miserable this time. It's a sort of happy crying. Isn't that silly, Michael? She's quite alone. Would you leave David alone there? Or would David leave you? Since the machine can't take her, someone's got to bring her. It's a very long way off, with thousands of miles of badlands in between. I know that, but there must be another way to get there. It would be hard and dangerous. No more dangerous than to stay in Wacknock. Besides, how could we stay, knowing that there is a place for people like us, where we belong? When you do reach us, Michael, you can be very sure of your place with us. We're still waiting for them. We haven't given up hope. Not yet. Hope something we must keep, for Michael's sake. I can still see his face turned towards us as our ship soared. We're up! So fast! It's awfully wonderful. I can see for simply miles and miles. Oh, Michael, you do look funny and tiny down there. I feel a bit funny and tiny just at present, Petra. But it'll pass. We'll be coming after you. Don't give up, Michael. Don't give up, Rachel. 
Our minds are open for you, always. And your coming will be coming home, as ours was. Very soon. Now, we are nearly there. There's the bay with the blue water. And the boats. And the carts without horses. And the white houses you told me about. We're going down. My dream. It's my dream, Rosalind. Oh, it's beautiful. And there's something else, too. Something you didn't tell me about. What? Listen. Oh, listen, David. Open your mind a bit more. What is it? Can't you guess? It's people, David. Lots and lots of them. Our kind of people. Wake up, David. It's time to wake up. Wake up. The night's ended. It's a perfect day. And there's so much to do. It's morning, darling. Morning. In The Chrysalids by John Wyndham, you heard Stephen Garlick as David, Amanda Murray as Rosalind, Judy Bennett as Petra, and Spencer Banks as Michael. Catherine was Philippa Ritchie, Rachel Jenny Lee, Anne Catherine Hurlbert, mother Sonia Fraser, father Peter Baldwin, Mary Elizabeth Ryder, and Uncle Axel Michael Spice. David as a child was Susan Sheridan, Sophie as a child Alyssa Derwent, Mrs. Wender and the Sealander Jennifer Piercy. Mr. Wender and the Spider-Man, Robin Brown. The Inspector, John Rye. Jacob, William Edel. Skinner, Martin Reed. And Sophie as a woman, Jane Knowles. The Chrysalids was dramatised for radio by Barbara Clegg and directed by Michael Bartlett. <laughs>